Today I've got eight Christmas wreath ideas and more. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be the Believe wreath. All right, so we're going to start off with a couple of ribbons of your choice. I like this wired ribbon with the candy canes. And then I have some from clearance from Walmart last year. Got it upside down there. And some of this ribbon, I think this came from Dollar Tree. I know you can certainly get this type of ribbon there. Then I have some pipe cleaners, which are red because they're going to match. And I have a pick with some peppermints on it. A little sign that I got at the thrift store and then two rolls of this burlap red burlap and you can get these at uh, I think you get these at Walmart I've had mine for years I'm going to use an 18 inch wreath from Dollar Tree it's gonna be a big wreath so we're gonna start with the same thing that we've done before if you are new to my channel then I'm gonna walk you through this so don't worry we're going to go around the center crossbar and then we're going to go in the middle and we're in the center ring. So this is laying flat and that center ring is above the rest of them. It's the tallest part. You want the curve to be upward in this wreath. You're going to twist around here. If you cross it over the bar and both rings uh, there, it'll kind of lock it into place a little better. Okay, so if you have a pick that is wrapped with paper, around the metal parts. You can pretty much just unravel the paper and then pull these picks apart and have individual picks. So I am not going to be using this little gingerbread man, but I'm gonna save him for another project. So I'm gonna clip him off and put him aside. I'm gonna use my rotary blade here. And these are Fiskars. I had some people asking about that. Y'all, I do have an Amazon store, so I try to put things similar to, if not the same, as the things that I use to help you out. So you can just check that link out, linked out in the description box to find that information. Okay, so we're going to be cutting 12-inch uh, pieces, and we're going to do 16, because we have 16 wires, or pipe cleaners, attached to the wreath. And we need 16 of these pieces. And I see how it curves upward if you flip it this way. We're gonna go with that, we're gonna work with it, fold it over, walk our fingers up, flip it around, flip it over a few times, and then walk that toward the center. Now you have this little ruffly bow here. I've heard people call it a cruffle. I've heard it called many different things, but you can just see what I'm doing here, easy. One, two little folds, and they're small folds, they're not big. I'm going to walk it over, leave about four inches, flip it over again, and then walk it toward the center. There's no wire in the burlap, in case anyone is wondering that. There are not. So you can go ahead and use little clips and put these together ahead of time. So when you start putting them down, it might make it a little bit easier for you. Just do it whichever way is best for you. There's no right or wrong here. I like to start off in a stable space. So if you start off in the spot where it's across the little crossbar there, it'll kind of hold it there. But the other ones will be allowed to slide freely back and forth until you get your ribbon bundles on. And then it's pretty much going to lock them into place at that point. So when you start doing this, you're going to think that you don't have enough, but you really do. You really, really will. It's going to get bulkier and thicker as you add the rest of these on here and as you start doing your ribbons on the top. This wreath, the way it is made, is kind of similar to the candy corn wreath that I did. Um, I have a mega video coming out with the wreaths and swags from fall and Halloween, so I've put those all together. And um, you'll see it's kind of similar to that. The burlap is smaller though, so the little ruffles are smaller. This is like a four or five inch um, burlap roll. Okay, so you see some move, some won't move. Just fluffing around here. And then you're gonna start pulling the pipe cleaners back up to the top because you're gonna be, it'll make it easier for you to find them once you start putting down your ribbon stacks. Just pull them up, pull them up, pull them up all the way around. 
I'm in my old antique wooden chair and it is a squeaker, so if you hear squeaks, I'm sorry, and I hope it's not distracting. Okay, so now we're gonna do 10 inch on our wired ribbon. I couldn't get it to cut very well with my rotary, so I just decided to switch over to my scissors. Just depending on the fabric, sometimes it's just easier to use one tool than the other. That's why I like to have a variety around me at all times. See, now my scissors didn't even want to cut this stuff. Isn't that something? All right, then I am going to take this ribbon, and I realize it's too long on one side. I'm going to cut these off at 8 inches. There is no wire in these, um, so cutting them a little bit smaller is going to help them not be so floppy. The weight, in other words, will not pull it straight down. You'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to fold it in half and then cut these at a slant. You can dovetail them if you want, whichever way you want to do it. This is a dovetail in case you're new and you don't know. You're just going to fold it in half and then from the crease to the tip you just cut it at an angle. Nice and crisp. And do the same thing on this side. Okay, so once we have our piles of the three types of ribbon we're going to use, you're going to need twice as many white so you'll need 32 of the white, 16 of the stripe, and 16 of the ones with the print on them. I'm making an X and then putting the smaller ribbons right on top. Now because the ribbons underneath are both wired, it'll help give a little body to this little bundle and it won't lay flat. It'll help support the white ribbon that doesn't have wire on the top. You just kind of squish them together in the middle And then you can either hold it in your hand and do one bundle at a time. You're going to open up your little wire here. Just go right down in the middle. You don't have to untwist. Place it down tightly and then give it a few twists. And then you can kind of fluff it out. So you see the size of this. It's a good wide amount and it covers um, a good bit of space. And that's what we want. I'm going to continue around with the next one. And you really can do your pattern however you want. If you want to use three different ribbons, if you want to use four, if you want to do 12 different ribbons, you can. However you want to do it. I'm just here to offer inspiration and get you motivated to find some joy in crafting. So that's what I do here on this channel. I don't critique anyone and um, you know, whatever brings you joy is, is exactly what you need to be doing with your crafting. Okay, show you one more time. And I know if you've been around a while, you're probably bored with this, but we want to get everybody on board. We want everybody to feel confident in their crafting. Okay, so we're just going down the line one spot at a time. So wherever you see your wires sticking up, go ahead and add it there. You're going to end up with 16 bundles all the way around. You can fluff as you go. You can wait until the end. We're back to the beginning now. I'm just going to add that one in here and then start fluffing it out. You're going to want to pull each and every one apart. You're going to curve the wired ones. You're going to flip them over and up. You're going to pull them side to side because if you secured them down to that wreath base tightly with your pipe cleaners, they're going to last. It's going to stay on there a while. Okay, so we're going to work with the pipe cleaners. You could cut them or you could tuck them back into the frame, but let's give them some little curls. How about that? I think this is a cute idea and it makes it look a little more festive. So I'm going to do that on each and every one. A little bit closer, I'm just using a, I think this was a, a foam brush um, handle. And I always save them because, you know, it's a piece of wood. And you never know when you might need that for a project. Going to give them little curly cues and then continue to fluff. So we'll give a little curl and we'll fluff. Give a little curl and we'll fluff till we're back around to the beginning like so. And it's already super cute. If you wanted to leave your wreath like this, you certainly could. 
If you're new to my channel, I want to say welcome to you. I'm so happy to have you here. I like to always offer you inspiration and try to find something to bring you some joy in your day. And we do all of this on a budget. I'd like to think that the crafts that I create here are individual and they are different. And um, yeah, I want to inspire you to think outside the box as well. So my belief sign, I took the hanger off and I cut it in half. Now we're going to reapply it because we don't want to have two different, um, we don't want to have one solid hanger. Although you could do it that way if you wanted. I want the hanger part to be kind of, to kind of disappear into the frame. So I'm just curling that back because that's how it was when I had it. But I had to use something really small to curl it so it would lay flat. Then if you press down on that little uh, twist, it'll just kind of lock it into place. Again, here we go. I'm twisting, twisting, twisting around here. It's going to get to almost like a little knot. You can see what it looks like. And stick it back through that hole and then press down on it. And then I can just feed it back through the wreath. I've already looked to see kind of where I want it. Now I'm just going to flip everything over and take those wires and go right through here. If your sign doesn't have wires on it already, that's fine. Use some hot glue, use some pipe cleaners. Um, and make your own attachment. You know, make your own little handles for it or supports, whatever it is that you need. Then when you flip it over, you can always tighten it up if you want it to be a little bit longer. Just don't pull too tight because it will sink into the, the wreath and it will squish it and it won't give it a very nice look. Kind of want it to look like it's floating in there. So this, this is just, I'm just showing you, it takes a little time to get it adjusted. It's not going to be perfect, you know, likely the first time and then move it around, and then you can give it more support. You can add a little hot glue if it needs it to help hold it in place. All right, now for the bow. I'm gonna use my bow maker tool. I will link that video for you down in the description box. If you would like to make your own, this was easy for me to make. All right, I am gonna start off with my stripe ribbon and put it on the bottom. I want about a 12 inch tail, so I'm just pulling that off on the end. It's a little bit fuzzy because my camera tends to focus on what's closest, but it will go in and out, but you'll get the idea. Since this is a printed ribbon, I am going to flip it over in the middle so that my pretty sides stay on the outside. So I'm going to hold it down and then twist. Sometimes you'll have to use your fingers just to hold it for a minute until you get your wire where you need it. Now you could, if when you're making your bow maker, you could put like a little peg on the bottom to hold the roll. Uh, if you wanted to. I just didn't do it. I didn't see it as necessary. It might make things a little quicker, but it's okay. All right, just to show you, I want my end, my little loops to be the same size, so I'm just looking there, and I'm pulling up a little bit to make sure that we get them the same. And then again, I'm going to cut off about a 12-inch tail on this side to complete this section of the bow. And this is just kind of a stacked bow. Um, it's not hard to make. I don't want you to be intimidated around the Christmas holidays. We have enough stress on us as it is for everything to be perfect, right? Especially if we have Christmas and holidays at our house. It can be quite stressful hosting a bunch of things. So we don't want the crafting and all the decorations to be stressful. So I'm doing this slowly for you so you can do it. I'm flipping it over because again, it's printed on one side and it's not very pretty on the other side. This bow is going to be about an inch smaller each loop. So if we started off with six inch loops, we want to go down to five on this bow, right? Because we want it to be graduated. So it would be a little bit smaller than the loops of the other bow. And I'm just pulling out and looking, and then I will be cutting it off too. I'm going to take my other ribbon and put it down here. I do twist a little bit of this just to hold it in place. It's not necessary. It's the exact same on both sides. It's like a little shoestring bow, right? It's kind of what it looks like. I'm going to take a red pipe cleaner because it will not interfere with the look of this project. I wouldn't want to use like a purple because you would be able to see it. And I'm just going to scoot it underneath, hold it in my fingers, and then slide the whole bundle upward. It's all in my hand securely, nothing's coming loose. And then I am going to um, twist this around so that the pipe cleaner is toward the back. 
see my little measurements here. At any point, if I need to adjust that, I can because it's not tied down yet. So this is real life, this is how long it takes. Twisting it nice and tight, keeping my fingers really low down to the backs of those bows to keep it nice and tight. And then you can flip it over and flip out your bow and taper your ends or dovetail the ends, whichever one you like. You can have all of your tails the same size on your bow if you would like, but I feel like it gives it a little more movement and a little more interest if you kind of um, vary the tails. Even on the same bow, they don't have to be the same length. Same thing here. I don't know what it is with that that striped ribbon from Walmart. It's really, really soft. It's almost like cutting cotton fabric. It's not stiff at all, so it takes a little more chopping. I look like I don't know how to use scissors, but I really do. I do, y'all. Okay, so now you can fluff it up. And the bow in the middle is just still too long for me and it's a little bit too floppy for me so I will fix that. I do something to fix it. I'm looking at my ends, looking at my measurements. Everything looks good, then we can put it on the wreath. And I'm just going to kind of center it underneath the believe sign right in the front. If you don't want to use a bow on yours, you don't have to. That wreath would have been perfectly fine without the bow. And some people say that I do too much, that I overdo it, but um, again, this is how I like it. This is an example of what brings me joy, and I like to inspire you by sharing that with you. So if you don't like it, you can certainly change it up. I encourage you to change it up. Now all it takes there in that center bow to take a little bit of the length out is just to tie it right across the center. You see there, now it has a little more body because it's shorter. And this is how that is going to look. And you can just hang it right off the wall or you could hang it with a, um, a pipe cleaner or a piece of floor wire. To go the next step, because I'm all about that life, I'm gonna add some peppermints here from that original pick. I think that with the word believe and the candy canes, it just looks sweet and childlike and I don't know. We should all believe in something, shouldn't we? We should. We should believe in something. We should feel something. We should have a, a guide to life. You know, Learn how to be good people. Learn how to respect one another. To believe that there's something more out there. And that we make a difference in the world. Each and every one of us. About the things we do and we say. This is a little bit closer of a look, and you can see it's good and full. If you like a more full wreath, you can certainly make it more full, but I try to keep it budget friendly, friendly so I want to show you ways that you can do it to make a big impact without spending a lot of money. going to be two candle rings. I'm going to start off with some of this that I got at the thrift store, but this is actually, I think, from Dollar Tree? No, Walmart. They're frosted picks. You can get snowy if that's what you want, but most of the time um, you see stuff covered in glitter or like a fine snow, I think. Um, you know, as far as vintage or retro goes, so I was trying to kind of stick to that idea. This is some um, vintage ribbon that I have. It's two-sided, can y'all believe it? And then a pack, a two-pack of these little rings from Dollar Tree. So they're wreath rings, but we're going to use them for our candles. We're going to use a little bit of floral wire to hold them in place. 
and then we'll start wrapping this around. So I'm going to take these sections that are cut about the same size and I'm going to attach the first one down to the middle rung of that wreath. Just going to continue to wrap that around there and protect your fingers, use some pliers if you need to. And then I am going to pull that tightly and then we're going to do like a step down. So I'm going down a couple of inches, going to overlap it, going to go down a few more inches, overlap that. And then continue to add until you are completely full all the way around that wreath. You could use holly, which I wish I had holly because I think that would have been like the ideal thing to use. You can use holly if you want to try to stick to the vintage idea. That's what I saw a lot of in the decor. But the boxwood will work. But it's lightly frosted, so nothing too flocked or anything like that. It's just a little bit of like an iridescent snowy glitter on there. All right, when you get back to the end of wrapping, you're going to just wrap it around that frame, wrap it to itself. Just like that. And then start kind of giving it a dry run with the berries and see if you like the placement, how many you like. Now for these, these berries came, they're kind of wrapped in twos. So I just decided to leave that alone and go with that. We're leaving it in twos and going around. I want to make sure I have enough to cover, but I don't want to, I don't want the berries to be overbearing. I want the greenery to be the bulk of what you notice when you look at this. Now that I know where I want them, I'm going to add my hot glue and then secure them down. So I'll just poke them back and forth until I get them how I like them. Using hot glue is really going to make a difference here. Just continue around until they're all glued down into place. You could use table scatter, like some red table scatter if you wanted to. You can use any other type of red berry that you like. And I know Dollar Tree has a variety of those, even on picks. So what about if you're working on your second one and you run out of your original greenery? Well, that's kind of what happened. So I'm going to show you what you can do. Go ahead and grab up some more scraps of greenery that you have and start putting those in there. What I try to do is add them in where they're evenly spaced so it looks intentional and it doesn't look like I ran out and just started poking stuff in there. And you can kind of weave the layers together and have some sticking out a little more and have some a little bit closer. Not only do you want to do the outside, but you want to add some to the inside. Not too much because keep in mind, this is not a wreath. It's going to be a candle ring, so you still need to have the opening in the middle where you can sit your candle. I do recommend a flameless candle for this um, so that nothing you know, possibly catches on fire, gets knocked over. You just don't ever know when you have pets in the house or children or even adults make mistakes, you know. You don't want to take a chance of anybody getting hurt. So you can just kind of watch what I'm doing here. Next I'm going to start with this bow and I've got this beautiful ribbon. I'm going to go with about six inches and then just loop it back on itself until you have two loops on the left two loops on the right and I know that you can't really see what I'm doing here and I apologize but I do have bow videos so you have seen me do this bow before. Once I get it all loopy I'm going to take two tiny snips in the center and then I'm going to take a piece of this white cotton cord and go right around the middle. You can use whatever you have. You can use your jute if you want to, but the white matches the ribbon, so I thought it would blend in without, you know, being noticed that much. So then I'm going to fluff those loops out, and putting notches in the bow helps this ribbon, which does not have wire in it, to stand out and to have a little body. And that's what you want. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'm pulling those 
I'm pulling the tails kind of downward and pulling the loops out and it does stand up really nice. Then you can just cut your little little tiny tiny little tails into little slants or dovetails whichever way uh, you prefer and then using some hot glue I am going to hold this down until it is dry because it will try to pop off if you don't. So if you put a candle in the center, which is what this is intended for, this is how it's going to look. We'll go back to the other one, which was like the first one we did. I'm going to add that bow on there and then put a candle in the center. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 Central Standard Time and the admission is free. The next is a retro wreath and I hope y'all like this one. This is a 12 inch wreath form. You can get one at Dollar Tree. This is just one I thrifted. We're going to lay it down with the curved side down. I've got some vintage ornaments here. Two boxes. Some of that lovely tinsel. But if you have something thicker, use that on this wreath. It will be better. You'll see why. Then I have a pick here that it is silver. I have some gray ribbon. It doesn't matter what kind you use, but because I am using silver, I wanted something that you couldn't see through it. So this sparkly ribbon will do the trick. I'm going to wrap it through the frame and then glue it to itself. Gluing it to itself instead of on the frame will keep it together nice and tight you don't have to worry about anything popping off. Then I am just going to start wrapping this around. I'm going to wrap it around as sparingly as possible but making sure that I overlap the pieces. You know I like to save and I like to help you save money so let's not waste anything we don't need to. Stretch it out as far as you can but get full coverage. When you get back to the beginning you can trim it off. Flip it over and then just glue that down on the back. This is going to make it so much easier when you go to wrap your tinsel you're going to have a better coverage. This is how it looks. Then flipping it over starting on the back we're going to add a little bit of tinsel here making sure it's on cool. I had bumped it up and then you're just going to start wrapping and you're going to wrap row by row by row all the way around. You might want to work in small sections so that you're not twisted up. When you get back to the bottom or to the original starting place, wrap it over, just over, you know, kind of overlap it and then trim it off. Give it just a second to dry. Then I have some of this that I took off of another project, probably something from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to wrap this around leaving some pretty big gaps in between. This is just adding some additional support and color that really in the end doesn't matter because you can barely see it. All right, I'm gonna start with the round ornaments and I'm going to do a north, south, east, west pattern. I have to put the glue on there and then gently but firmly press it and hold it into place for a minute because you're using cool glue and you do not want these ornaments to pop off. They are hand-blown glass and that would make a mess. So Gorilla Glue, folks. Gorilla Glue. I'm going to lay out my pattern with these tear-shaped snowflakes. I think is what they're called. And I'm going to add some glue and then hold it in place just like I do the other ones so that nothing pops off. And because we have the curved edge on the table and the top part is the concave section, it kind of makes you feel like it's resting in a curve, which gives it a little more support. So I've trimmed off the stem here from this little pick and I'm going to bend it and then push it through the inside of the wreath. I'm going to add some glue here and just make sure that it doesn't fall off. 
Then I'll take some of these ornaments, well, these lights. These are old lights that I got from Goodwill that probably don't work anymore. But they add color and they really do. I, I, if you're looking at this going, what in the world is she doing? This is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Please go over to Pinterest and look at some of the wreaths. One thing I know about it is the more the merrier when it comes to these things. As much vintage stuff as I can find and poke in this wreath, I'm putting it in there. This is like a collage, like a Christmas collage, if you will. And I am just filling it up with all kinds of stuff. My husband loves this one. He loves it. And I know that somebody out there watching is also going to love this and find inspiration. If this is not something that you would necessarily do on your own, that is fine. But I hope it has brought you back some good memories. So I'm looking around just to make sure I have enough stuff. And you know what? I can do better. So I'm going to take some of this table scatter and I'm going to add it here and there. Because to me, it follows the theme. We can add some stars and some more color. There's definitely some yellow in those ornaments or gold that we don't have. So those gold stars, I think, help kind of accentuate the colors. These are some picks that came in some of the vintage stuff that I found at Goodwill. And now, folks, I'm going to have to go back to Goodwill and look for more vintage stuff because I don't have any more left after doing these projects. This is fun though. This is definitely something. If the, if the ornaments were plastic, this is something that you could probably do with your kids. Maybe do it anyway, but just use some supervision and, and share some stories with your grandkids or your kids about Christmas when you were a child. Share those good memories. Give them something pleasant and fun to remember. Let them see you as a child. Let them see that joy in you so they know that no matter how old you are, you're important, and what you have to say is important. Okay, so we're going to take a pipe cleaner for the back. I'm just using one of these candy cane stripe pipe cleaners I've had for a while. I do not know where they came from. I'm sure you could probably get them at Dollar Tree, I'm sure. Or you can make your own with white and red, just twist them together. And I'm just going to twist a loop in the back, which is fed through the tinsel wire, so we have a way to hang it up. The next is a ornament mobile. I have done mobiles before or mobiles or whatever you want to call them, but I've done them before. I've done some for summertime in a video from way, way back. I'll try to link that. Um, but this, this is going to be so nice. So I've got these 10 ornaments and this beautiful, to me this just screams Scandinavian. Um, I really like that. I've got some of that pitberry cord in red and white. I've got some greenery picks, greenery pieces, and an 11 inch wreath. So I'm going to start by just taking these pieces, and these are really just scrap picks that I've had and used in other arrangements and taken out. We're going to do this in like a clockwise or counterclockwise pattern, just meaning that we want everything to flow in the same direction all the way around. I'm going to take matching pieces for the top and bottom and matching pieces for the left and right. Go ahead and use some hot glue. If this is something that you want to be permanent, you can use some hot glue. You can also use floral wire to attach these down, but I'm going to be using the pitberry vines to hold it in place, but I'll let you see how that works shortly. 
Now for the little spaces that are um, sort of have little gaps, I'm going around with my extras to see how I need to fill it in and cover up the little gaps. And then I will go back in with a little hot glue and place those back down when I know that everything is where it should be. You know how it is when you get to the bottom of your supply or you're doing an arrangement and you have one piece left and you're thinking, okay, where do I put this one piece? Where do I need this the most? So I was trying to stretch it out because I knew I had a very limited supply of these, but I thought maybe they would fit around this wreath and they do, so it worked out. All right, so we're gonna start with the white pit berry and I'm just going to wrap this around. You can kind of weave it in behind the uh, the vine there, the vine wreath. You can weave it in behind if you want to, or you can tie it or twist it off so that it stays down. When I go around, I'm going to make sure that I go behind some of the greenery and then in front of some of the greenery. You can see me moving the pieces because I want the pit berry to show, but I don't want my all of my little flyaway pieces to be trapped down underneath there. I want it to be kind of a loose, airy look. Something very natural. And then when you get it all the way around, you can just clip it off. I don't like to use my scissors for this type of thing. These are some little, I think they're jewelry clippers. I got them at the thrift store, so obviously there's no label, but I think that's what it is. They look sort of like cuticle cutters to me. So after the white is on, I'm gonna go back with the red. If you don't want to use two different colors, you don't have to. Um, for me, I wanted both of them because my ornaments are red and white. So I wanted to just carry that through the theme of this video. And I'm just gonna do the same process with the red. I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna have some pieces tacked down and some pieces kind of flying away, just weaving it in and out. And this is going to help hold everything in place. When you get to the end, you can just twist your little end around a piece of the vine and it'll lock everything into place. So see, some of the pieces are sticking out, some of the pieces are laying flat, and I, I like this natural look. To me, the natural look is what really makes this, um, the wreath part or the top part of this mobile, 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 so pretty. And again, another little piece of glue. This one I forgot to glue down. Then I'm gonna take all of the little strings, these are just little cord strings, off of these beautiful ornaments. If you can't find something like these ornaments, get any type of a snow ornament or something that has that pattern on it and use that instead. However you feel like you wanna use this. Birds, snowflakes, geometric style, whatever. Um, I think they'll fit nicely into this pattern in this style. I just went through the front of there and tied it in a knot in the back, added a little hot glue to lock it in place. I'm gonna trim off this, this is like a cotton cord. I'm gonna trim it off at 18 inches and it's gonna be 18 inches for each piece. They will not all hang at the same length because we are going to test them out and you'll see how that is done. It's not hard to do, so don't be intimidated by it and think that you can't do it. You absolutely can. Uh, my camera angle is not the best, but I am going to do the best I can with my gift of gab to explain to you exactly what I'm doing here. All right, so then to hang it, I am going to take two 18 inch, could be slightly longer, strips of that same pit berry. I chose the white and I'm just going to twist it around the top of the wreath, not the bottom, the top, because this is gonna be the means for us to hang this from whatever type of a shepherd's hook or whatever you wanna use. Now see, it works very well of holding the weight, so that's, you don't have to worry about that. These pit berries are on a wire, and that's gonna help hold it in place. So I've just done, uh, if you want to imagine, 10, well, 12 and six, nine and three, north, south, east, west. That's where I'm connecting them down. And I'm raising them up to make sure that the length is the same on both ones. If you wrap it around and have the same amount 
in each little knot or wrapped piece, then it should be level when you pick it up. But you can adjust it because it's not glued down, it's just twisted down. So you just adjust it as you go, pick it up, look at it, make sure it's level. Then taking another little piece of that pitberry vine, I am making a loop and then twisting it over on itself on the end. And this will give us a loop to hang it. It's gonna hold it right there, see, very nice. And then I know it's gonna work, so I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna start adding in those beautiful tin ornaments. I know that since I have four of these, and the bird is gonna be something different, but these four snowflakes, I am going to add them in four places, just like before. I'm just gonna start at whatever length for the first one. I'm not measuring it. We know that all the cords are 18 inches because we cut them at that length. You can adjust the height by just putting one knot in first, turn it over, lift it up, see where it's hanging, slide it down, adjust it, and then tie your triple knots in it. You can even secure it with hot glue if you want to once you've done all the hanging, all the tying onto this piece. So when you pull it up like this, the more string you have, the little loose end string, see how long that extra piece is that's going to make that ornament strand a little bit shorter than the other ones so you want to make sure that they kind of are at different heights that's the idea and then i'll just turn it over and raise it up and i know you can't see this but this is me looking to make sure it's the right height now i'm going to go back up to the top here and tie around my bird lift it up Make sure that it's hanging at the right length. It's a little higher than the rest of them, and that's what I want. This isn't a wind chime, so I'm not, I'm not aiming for the bird to hit the snowflakes. It's just to be pretty and move around in the wind. But I guess you could. If you wanted to do a little clapper or something, you could do that. And don't worry, I will give you a good look at this in the end. So I know all you can see right now is me tying on the bird. I'm gonna tie it very, very securely. Trim that off. The first project is a Victorian wreath. We're gonna start off with one of these vine, grapevine wreaths. This is about 17 or 18 by 14, so it's oval. Then I have some of these beautiful poinsettia picks from Dollar Tree, two different kinds in three bunches. And I have two of these tubes of ornaments in two different sizes, and we have like a rose gold and a gold. These are a set of bills that I got from the thrift store. Then we have some glitter paint, some rose gold paint, and a sponge brush. A variety of old ribbons and new whatever you have on hand we're going to start by clipping off all of our flowers leave enough stem there that we can attach these down into the wreath now let me show you how you can make these pitiful looking flowers much more substantial we're going to put two together so we're going to pull one off and this is me trying to discover how to get the centerpiece off it's just easiest to cut it and then the little seed part just pops right out. And then we have four leaves here. I'm going to take the stem from another flower, feed it right through, put the stem back on, and look at that. So we're going to do the same thing with these, but these have like a little snap sort of situation going on, and it just pops off, but it stays on very securely. So I'm going to take the bees off of this one. Now we just have the two layers of petals. I'm gonna take one more of these apart, pull the back off, leave the berries in that one, or the center, and then just push those other petals up there, snap that little back part back on. If I was looking at what I was doing with my glasses, I could've got that first try. Put the stem back on and look at the difference. Isn't that amazing? All right, so I knew that I wanted these bells to be a rose gold color, however, I wasn't exactly sure how the paint would do 
on this plastic because these are just plastic bells. So I start off with a brush putting the paint on and it just barely makes any coverage. I just, I go ahead though and do all three of them, but then I go back in with one of these brushes and I'm just kind of pouncing in it and just offloading and just dotting it all over the bells. And y'all, the texture that this makes is beautiful. It looks like old bells are old and, and rusted and aged. It looks perfect for the Victorian style. So I really hope that you try this. Now I've got some fern picks from Dollar Tree and these are in gold. And then I'm not sure where these came from because I thrifted these. And they're just uh, some type of a pine, I guess, since they have pine cones. We're gonna take the fern picks apart, just cut them down where we have enough stem to work with and leave these greenery pieces whole. Now for my wreath, I'm gonna start on the bottom and just push this into the grapevine wreath, you know, the stem part of it. And then for a change, rather than using floral wire here, I'm gonna use some zip ties to show you that you can do things many different ways and it's just not wrong. Just however you can get these on here, you can put them on here. If you don't have a zip tie, if you don't have floral wire, you can always hot glue them, although I'm not sure how long it would last that way um, or you could use pipe cleaners you know whatever you want to use here you could use some jute cord whatever you have it's no excuse to stop once we've gotten started right right so we're gonna move along with the other two picks and these are kind of gonna go upward I'm gonna start with the higher one and it's going to kind of go toward the top center as you can see here it's gonna wrap around this way and it is not going in the same direction as the bottom piece. I'm gonna secure it down with a zip tie, and then I'm going to grab another one, put a little bend in its stem too, and just put it right underneath the one we just put in. It's gonna leave a little gap in the middle for us to add a bow at a later time. Very easy, zip tie, snug it down on there, and any pieces that need a little securing, go ahead and do that. Then I'm gonna start adding this beautiful gold fern. I chose the greenery that I'm using here because it has sort of a bluish gray tint, and I thought it would give a really pretty contrast with all of the warm from the gold. And it, I think it will look nice with the pink too, that cool color. And the pink is actually, I guess it's more of a mauve type color. I'm not really sure. You could maybe call it rose gold. I mean, what do you think? You'll see when you get a closer look at those ornaments. You tell me what color you think it is. Because I'm really not sure what to call it. So I'm going to move these pieces around in the greenery. Just some sticking out, some on top. Just kind of thread them around through each other and fluff them where they need to be fluffed. Just spread it out a little bit so it looks like it belongs there. And I'm going to continue around with this. And I decided that one more piece right here would be pretty. Just a kind of little flyaway, a little extra up there. And this is how it looks so far once we've got our greenery on, our greenery and goldery. And now these now lush poinsettias that we put together, we can start adding these. If you don't have poinsettias from the Dollar Tree, that's fine. You can get them on at Hobby Lobby right now, I think for 60% off. They're, it's very economical. And I've heard that Walmart has some beautiful greenery picks um, out this year too, so you might want to check that out. We always want to keep it budget friendly on this channel, right? That's how we do it here. We want to do different things and we want to keep it budget friendly. So I'm continuing around with the two different types of poinsettias. Looking good so far. Staples in them, that's really weird. So be careful with that. We're gonna make a bow. I'm gonna use my own little bow maker tool here. Didn't copy anybody. I'm very appreciative of the original creator of this. Um, mine is not exactly the same, so I'm not putting anybody out of their, their royalties or anything. Just making something that I can afford, right? And you know how to make a bow. 
you've seen me do this bow before this is not a difficult bow and the fabric in these bows well in this ribbon is wonderful it's old but the texture is so different than anything I felt before it's like a it's a stiffer papery yet still fabric type I don't know and this is like a a velvety feeling ribbon and it's got the glittery polka dots on it so pretty we're gonna do two loops on each side and they are going to be six inch loops with 18 inch tails so you saw me first put the 18 inch tail out there and then make two sets of loops like this then I'm gonna pull that other tail down make sure we get them about the same length doesn't have to be perfect snip it off okay now leaving that bow on the bow maker I am going to go ahead and add on my next ribbon. This one is a stunner. This ribbon is absolutely beautiful. It has poinsettias on it. It is silver and gold. And it's also that really interesting feel. It's almost, I don't know, is taffeta the right word for it? I don't know. It's really different. It is wired. Both of these are wired ribbon. So it's the same process as we did with the bow underneath. You see me just kind of fold it in half. That's how I always do my bows so that the bulky part goes in the middle. Squeeze my wire pieces together and then feed it down there and then cut it off. Now I'm just gonna take a piece of cotton twine and you can certainly use whatever you have here for this because it won't show in the end. So go ahead and use a pipe cleaner or a zip tie, whatever you're more comfortable with because we will be covering up the center and then add a couple of knots, snip it off, get all that excess out of the way, and then you can start looking at your bow and fluffing it out. I love the combination of these two bows together. Now the bow on the bottom has the six inch loops, the bow on the top, I don't think I said, it has five inch loops. So it's a little bit smaller, the one in the front, but the tails are about the same length. You see how this material just stands up so I don't know it's wonderful I wish that we could find Dollar Tree ribbons of this quality so pretty we're gonna dovetail the ends or you can cut them at a slant whatever you're comfortable with I'm trying to put a really steep cut there just to make it a little different I'm gonna take a thin piece of floor wire go through my little center here where we tied it you could always do this before you tie the center up but I almost always forget so this is an easy way to kind of Make it look like you did it on purpose. I meant to do that. So put it down in the center of where those greenery pieces meet. And I'm just gonna take the wire around the back and twist it and fold it tightly and tuck it into the wreath so it doesn't poke any fingers. This is how we're looking so far. Really like it. So now here are those ornaments and there's that pinkish color I was talking about. I'm going to add some hot glue to hold these little tops on because they pretty much snap on but when you are using when you're bundling these together and putting pressure on them they have a tendency to pop off and I don't want that to happen once I've gotten all that work done so I'm just going to go ahead and do it now get it over with and I'll do every one of the bundles and we're going to do three bundles this is easy you just feed them through the wire I'm just going to do two golds and a pink and then two pinks and a gold just to kind of alternate them so one big two small in each little bundle twist them together see this would be the part where they would pop off of those little hanger sections if you didn't have them glued on I'm gonna trim this off and then twist down to sort of make um, like a little more of an area that you can attach it down to the wreath a little something else to add some glue to just twisting it folding it up twisting it again so it almost has like a little stem which you could feed through the wreath if you chose to do it that way but they'll be nice and tight in there then you're going to add some hot glue to your wire to the ornaments wherever it needs to be added so that it stays in the very center of your bow and to me y'all that is pretty those colors are so gorgeous together don't you think I think that the pastels and the wine colors they're all colors that look really good in a Victorian style 
um, home or decor. And I'm just going to add three sets, so one on the top, one in the bow, and then one is going to be in the bottom. Just trying to get an idea of where I'm at. Once the bell has dried, I'm going to take this beautiful um, older looking gold, it's like a brushed gold I think is what it's called, a tiny little foam brush, and I'm going to go all over the clapper or that little round part of the bell and the bottom of the bell. You can see me patting that on. I'm trying to do this all the way up to the edge of where the pink starts or the rose gold starts. And I'm going to go up and down all the way over until every bit of that bright shiny silver that was on there is covered up. And you just have to be patient with this because it does take two coats to cover it, um, you know, to be thick enough to really cover it. So this is what it looks like with one. Right there. And then you'll do each one of those, let them dry and do one more coat. And then I'm going to choose my placement where I want these bells to be on this wreath. Initially, I thought I would hang them right down in the middle, but for balance sake, I think it looks better off to the side. So this is where I've decided to place it. To give it a little more support and something to attach the bells a little more securely to the wreath, I'm just using a piece of a popsicle stick that I broke off or a crab stiff stick. <laughs> and I am going to give it like a little base there. That'll be where we put our glue. Right through the top there's a couple of holes so I'm taking another piece of that wire, the floral wire, feeding it through there and that's how I'm going to attach the top part of it to the wreath. You can feed it through the wreath into the back or really the easiest most non-frustrating way to do it is just to wrap it all the way around, twist it up and it's so thin you're not going to be able to see it. Adding hot glue on that craft stick back there and pressing it down and then underneath the base if there's any areas that you can see or touching you can go ahead and put it there too. I'm going to add another piece of fern just to cover up my little top there and this is what we have. I've done a lot of research on vintage and Victorian and this is my idea, this is my representation of what a Victorian wreath would look like. Do you like it? If you do, a thumbs up would be much appreciated and it will let me know that I am on the right track. going to do the wreath for the first one. So we're going to get this beautiful sign from Dollar Tree or any sign you like. I have a wreath form from Dollar Tree. It is the 18 inch. I have a big roll of this deco mesh. I think it is a 24 inch. I cannot tell you how much is on there but you can figure the feet out. I have some gold paint, a variety of textured ribbons. I have this gold but you can get um, like a red at Dollar Tree similar to it. Then I have two wired ribbons. I'm going to add um, some paint to this ring here. Just because the main metal tones are going to be gold, because that's what's on the edges of the ribbons, I want to make sure that everything matches. Pipe cleaners are going to go on our wreath form to hold our deco mesh down. I've done this type of a wreath several times, so this is not going to be anything new to you if you've been here a while. If not, I'll explain it to you. So we're going to have 16 pipe cleaners. We're going to do the cross sections, which is the middle section of each one, and then we're going to add one to the outside or the third ring there. When I go across here, I wrap it across the center section right around the middle, so it kind of locks it in place. Now keep going around. If you're going to use a white deco mesh, you probably want to use a white pipe cleaner so that you don't see it. Whatever matches would work. It kind of blends together. So to keep that from moving if it bothers you, just add a little hot glue on either side and let it dry. 
And this is what it looks like when you have all 16 pipe cleaners on it. The next step is to take our deco mesh and bunch up the last few ends of it in your hand so it doesn't matter if it's kind of raggedy looking. You're going to bunch it up and begin placing it down on the wreath. Some of this will be a little bit out of your camera range here but I'm going to try to make up for it when I move around you'll be able to see a little bit better. So you're just going to twist that in. You can start wherever you like. I like to start on the middle ring. Then you're going to just take and bunch up a section and we're going to make these sections into, what did I do, a 10 or 12 inch. And then we're going to continue around back and forth. So we'll go from the outside to the inside to the outside to the inside with the same size poofs all the way around. You can use a cutting mat with measurements if you want to do it that way. Or you can just kind of uh, use your ruler like I'm doing. I wanted to use the ruler so I could show you if you don't have a cutting mat or one of those marked little uh, tables, you can do it this way. Bunch it up and then tuck it down into the next one. So I know I'm a little out of range here, but you get the idea. It's very easy. You just pull your loop or your little um, poof. You pull it out, you measure it, you tack it down. Same thing, pull it out, measure it, and then tack it down to the next one. You want to make sure you don't miss any. Keep going. It's going to get kind of crowded, but that's okay. That's what you want. Also, I might add, if you want to spray paint your wreath form, you can, but if you get it full enough, you're not going to be able to see it. Right now, you will see it, but don't be alarmed because you can cover that up. So we're going to go all the way around back to that same place where we started from, and I had just a tiny bit left. So I'm just going to trim off what was left on that roll. This is just leftovers. That's why I really can't tell you how big that roll was, and I got it at the thrift store. You can take that section and tuck both of those pieces down on the inside and they'll be out of the way. I decided to use some of this red burlap that came from Walmart. I got it on clearance several years ago and I had a couple of rolls left. I'm almost done with them now. And I'm just going to add that down I'm going to do it on the other side. You don't want to put everything in the same starting point because um, you might run out of pipe cleaner when you're twisting it down. Plus, you don't want anything to get too bulky on one side. So just to keep it all nice and slim, we're going to keep going around this way. Now, this is the same exact thing that I did with the white poofs that we used, but I'm just going to be using the burlap this time. So I'm going to measure out how much I need. So there's my 10 inches. Squish it up with my fingers. Pull it down to the next one. So now I'm on the outside, the next one will be on the inside, then the outside, then the inside, until you get all the way back around. I used more than one roll of this. I used a one complete roll and then I used a section from another roll. Are we getting the idea here? You see how we're doing it? And don't be afraid to move that stuff around and get it out of your way so you could put your next layer down. Squeeze it in there and wrap it tight. So here is where I ran out, but I still had a little space there where I needed some burlap. So what you're going to do is just bunch up the new roll, the new piece you're going to put down. I'm just going to keep that little end in place, unwrap it a little bit without letting it pop out, put the other one on top, Press it down and twist it in. Now you can just keep going. Make your 10 inch, pull it into your next pipe cleaners, and then tighten it down. I hope y'all been enjoying all the wreath videos. So many for Christmas. And it has been a lot of fun doing them. So this is what that tag looks like. I found it on the floor. <laughs> okay. So now you can just... Cut off that extra piece. It's not going to be any problem sticking out on the side. You can tuck it in if it bothers you. And we're going to begin to fluff this out. I'm going to pull the white section to the inside and the red to the out. Then I'm going to move the white to the outside and the red to the inside. It's going to be sort of back and forth. Back and forth. Like the red is kind of woven through the white. 
but it's different textures and I think it really gives a little more interest than using all deco mesh. But if you don't have burlap rolls, you can always use another color deco mesh and get pretty much the same look. You know, if you use a smaller one, if you use a bigger one, then it's going to be a lot thicker, the wreath will be. So continue around like this until you get it all the way fluffed out. Now we're going to start on our ribbon stacks. So I'm going to start with the holly and we're going to do 12 inches. I'm going to need 16 of these and be sure that you dovetail your ends, make them nice and neat. And then it's where I decided I wanted to add the green burlap over there. You can see that those rolls are from Dollar Tree and it took two rolls to do it. And you're going to have 16 of each ribbon pattern that you chose. And then we're going to start stacking them up. I'm just going to make like an X and then another X right on top of it. Then you can kind of walk your fingers and squish toward each other until you get the little bundle in the center and keep your little ribbon straight. You know, you can pull them around in your hand gently. And then you can start placing those down. Each place that there is a pipe cleaner, you will have a ribbon stack. You can mix these up. You can change your, um, the pattern that you use. So if you want to do your green and gold next to each other, you can do that. However you like it, you can do it that way. And I do like to use different sizes of ribbon too. It just gives it a little more interest. If you make these ribbons much smaller, they're going to sink down into your wreath and you won't notice them as much. So for the 10 inch poofs, I'm doing 12 inch ribbon strips. Just to give you an idea, if you want to scale down, you can. I'm going to walk these toward each other, my little thumbs and fingers, till I hold them in my hand. And I have little hands, and if I can do it, I know you can. Then I'm going to press it down in here. Now you can do these one by one like I'm doing them, or you can pre prepare them in advance with little clips and just put them off to the side and then start adding them when you take the clips off. Whatever's easier for you, that's how you want to do it. So is everybody finished with their Christmas crafting? Is everybody done with that? Are we still working on Christmas crafts? Are we still looking to watch Christmas? I'm curious to know. Okay, so now we still, these are all going to be fluffed out now and you're gonna see the big difference. Pulling them out, you, they have wire in them. Um, one of my ribbons does not. That gold mesh does not have wire in it, but it'll stay up on its own. It's really lightweight. Fluff them out, curl them under, move them around a little bit as far as moving the tails back and forth. And you can go ahead and cut off your pipe cleaner. If there's any question in your mind, go ahead and give it one final wrap before you trim it off so that everything stays locked into place. You don't want it to fall apart once you start fluffing. And if you cut them too small, they just might come apart. Same thing here. I'm going to leave just a tiny space there before where I've twisted it because I, again, don't want to cut into the twist because it will fall out. So just go above it. And this is why I say to use white. You could also use red here if you wanted to, whatever coordinates. But you definitely wouldn't want a purple in there because it wouldn't match, right? So now look at it once it is nice and fluffed. You see that? Big difference. You really have to touch every piece of that ribbon. Bend them, twist them, make it intentional. Now we're going to work on this sign a bit. So it's got this MDF, which is how it's made, but I want to take this Snow White and put it right over the edges. You can see my camera is rocking. I had some complaints my last video that my um, they can't see the entire project. However, if you wait to the ends of most of my videos, you can get a good look at them. Um, but I'm trying to accommodate a little bit, but you should see how I have this camera rigged up. It is crazy business crazy. It's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa over there. But I'm hoping that Santa Claus will bring me a new tripod so that I can get way above my table and you can see every single bit of everything I'm doing. 
I do try to, to show you though what I'm doing. So I've stapled the pipe cleaners on the back and then I'm gonna thread them through the wire frame that is underneath. I'm not gonna pull tight because it will sink down into it. I don't wanna squish down my puffs. So I'm just gonna pull it enough that it just sits in the top. I'll do that to the top and the bottom. So this time I'm gonna show you the reveal of this one first. This is how this beautiful wreath looks. I didn't add a bow. I didn't add any extra embellishments on it because I think with the holly and the busyness of the ribbon that it just, it looks gorgeous together just like this. I think this would be a beautiful hostess gift if you wanted to make a wreath like this to give to someone. Maybe you didn't cook the meal, but somebody else put in all that effort. What a wonderful way to say either Happy Thanksgiving, I appreciate the hard work, or for Christmas, thanks for all that you do. Something like this would be really nice, in my opinion. The next project is gonna be a swag, and we're gonna use the Dollar Tree Christmas trees for this. You can use white or green, depending. Then I'm going to use a beautiful pick that I got when I was thrifting. It's got a little snow on it. Then I've got some poinsettia varieties here, a bunch of different ones that coordinate. I have some snowflake ribbon, some of this beautiful ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby, and this one too. This is gift trim, but it's actually, it works totally fine in crafting as well. This is a beautiful velvet green, so stunning. The color is so rich. So we're gonna start by taking those trees out. You can start by taking, you can put aside the stands because you're not gonna need those. Throw them away or save them for another project. I always trash them. Believe it or not, I save everything, but I trash those. And then just start, lay it flat on the table and then pull them out. You wanna pull all these little pieces out because this is going to almost take the place of a pipe cleaner and that you will be using these limbs to hold it down. Open up both the trees the same way. I'm cutting off these crazy extra long tips that I have no idea why they are made that way, but that's beside the point. Once you get those flipped out, you can put one on top of the other and you're gonna stagger it down. This is how I've, you've seen me make them in the past, but I have also made one like this, like the snowflake wreath. Now, I, can, I know you can't see right now, but you wanna go down about five or six inches from the top of the other one and connect these together. You're gonna see in just a minute what I'm talking about. And this will make a 20 inch swag. So you're gonna just use some pipe cleaners and attach the poles that are in the center together. So the back one and the front one are attached and the same here. You can see that it's pushed down further than the other one. And then you can just make sure that you have pretty much equal amounts on either side. You're gonna use your pretty greenery to go on top of this, so you don't have to worry as far as how it looks, but you do wanna have your pieces out where you can use them to hold your things into place. So that's what I'm doing here, trying to make it kind of even. Now you can see it in its entirety, and that's about a 20 inch swag. And this is a teardrop swag. I'm gonna cut off the pieces that I like best and I really am favoring the snowy pieces because I think it's gonna look really good with the snowflake ribbon that I chose. Then we're going to start laying down pieces of the pick. This is not a huge swag, so I need to cut my pieces down so that they're manageable. I want them to be a little wider than the swag to give it a little more oomph, to give it a little more body, to make it a little bit larger. So you're just gonna place your pieces down. I like to kind of overlap my stems on the bottom and then twist a piece or two around it. You can use one and make it like a circular kind of thing where it locks in, or you can use two different pieces like you would with a pipe cleaner. I'm gonna go down to the center section of the wreath and add another one on the right and on the left. If you're concerned about this coming loose, feel free to either use pipe cleaners or use a little hot glue to hold it together. Then we're gonna go down here on the last third of it. I'm going to put one off to the left and one off to the right. So 
so far. This is how it looks. And then we're gonna add one more down here to the bottom. And again, I want it to overlap the kind of cheaper looking greenery that is underneath. But you see how nicely the branches from the Christmas tree holds everything in. Here are the ribbons. I love these Hobby Lobby ribbons. I got them on sale for 60% off when they were 60% off. I'm gonna layer these up. I just chose to put the silver on the bottom and the green on top. I'm gonna pinch them together. And then starting on the bottom, I'm gonna pull out a branch. Yeah, I'm making sure I get the right branches in there. And I'm going to wrap them around tightly so that my ribbon does not come out because you know we have to fluff, right? You know this already. If you come to my channel, there's gonna be some fluffing going on. So we're gonna do eight inch little sections here. Eight inch little, almost like a poof, I guess you could say. Because we're gonna make the section and then we're gonna make sure that it is kind of like four inches up from there. It's going to have a little, a bend. So it's gonna be almost as if it was woven through the greenery. And probably the way I'm phrasing it is not near as good as you just watching how I do it. You can see here. And this is another one of those things that definitely is not hard. People say, I cannot make a wreath. I cannot do it to save my life. You can. You just have to believe that you can do it. Find the pieces that you really like and then start doing it. If you need to use that ruler to help you make sure that you have the right size measurements so that your sides are even, go ahead and do that. And this way I have the same amount on each little loop. So we're almost through with this one side. My last little loop is going to go over and into the center. And then I'll lock it down. Now because this has a pattern that goes in a specific direction because of the wording, rather than going all the way around in continuous motion, I decided to go back down to the bottom and start on that side. Now if you have a ribbon that's maybe say a plaid or that has a pattern that's all over the place without writing, then there really is no top or bottom. So you would not have to worry about doing this. You could just continue all the way around, uh, almost like in an oval, rather than starting back over on the bottom. But it's, you know, it's fine. Either way, totally up to you. Whatever's easiest, as I always say, whatever's best for you is gonna be the best you can do. So keep going up here, wrap them around. And you'll notice I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get it toward closer to the outside of the wreath. The inside of the wreath is where we're going to put our beautiful poinsettias. So there needs to be like a little spot in there where there is nothing else there. That's gonna be a little nest for them. So now we're back to our starting spot. I'm just going to cut that off, leaving a little bit extra there, and then start pulling these apart. And just like with the wreath, you wanna just kinda pull these out, alternate. So we have the silver on the inside, keeping the green right in the middle, and the wording on the outside. And then you can just alternate back and forth, or if you prefer to do all of it in one direction, you can do that too. Whatever tickles your fancy. I'm so glad everybody is loving the Victorian video. I have gotten so many kind comments, and I really appreciate the encouragement because it is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, and I'm really trying my best to, to bring y'all some different things because I have lots of viewers and everybody has different tastes, right? And I'm not saying that any style or fashion is wrong, so I wanna be sure that I can show you uh, different options. Maybe you don't know what your style is or what you like. Well, maybe you watch some of my videos and you find out what you like, and then I'll help you make those things. So these beautiful, Beautiful flowers have clips on the back. So all you have to do is clip them on. I know Dollar Tree carries some that you can clip on Mine actually came from the thrift store. You know, I always say it. It is all it's the truth Believe it or not. It is the truth Now I'm dovetailing my ends and just cutting these beautiful green pieces into little slants and we're going to cover up the top bar that is sticking out with this Green ribbon. I'm just going to add some hot glue on here 
pick it up and put it on the underside of that stem or the pole, whatever that is, pinching it together so that it, you know, kind of clings to the outside there. Then go on over the top. I'm going to do the same thing. Leave a big section in the middle because this is going to be our hanger. You're going to push this around and squeeze it tight. Now we're going to make a bow to go on the bottom. So we're going to pinch up the tail here. It's going to be 12 inches. And then we're going to do 12 inch sections that are going to give us 6 inch loops. So go there to the 12. Grab it in your hand. Then you can go, and I'm measuring to make sure it's the right size, and it looks like that's going to be the perfect size. It shouldn't overwhelm the swag. won't be too ginormous. And for those of you who don't like bows, feel free to just leave this off and put something else down there. So I'm going to use a clip to hold it in place while I work on the next one. I'm going to, again, get a 12-inch tail. Then I'm going to have 6-inch loops. And I have a bow video, and I have all kind. you've seen me do all kinds of bows. If you prefer a different bow for this, you just go right ahead and do it. All right, so the green, we're going to make a little bit smaller. We're going to do a 12-inch tail, but we're going to make these 10-inch pieces. Because the green does not have wire, it's a little on the floppy side, and I don't want it to look sloppy. Floppy is okay if it's intentional. I don't want it to be sloppy. So now I'm going to cut the other tail about the same length. Then we're going to add this to the silver and to the green. And then I'm going to add my pipe cleaner to the back. And a zip tie. Now this is going to keep it in place. And it is going to allow us to attach the bow down to the swag with the pipe cleaner that I actually remembered to use this time. Can I get a thumbs up for that? Yes, I remembered it. By the way, if you're watching this on Thanksgiving, very happy Thanksgiving to you. I don't expect a whole bunch of views on this video today because I know a lot of people are spending time with their family. But you know what? I went ahead and did the video because not all of us have family or a place to go. And this way, you don't feel like you're alone. So I hope it helps. I hope it helps somebody. I hope it brings a little bit of joy to you today. All right, again, I cut the green at a slant, and then these other ribbons I'm going to cut with a dovetail. Fluff it up nicely. And look at this gorgeousness. Isn't it pretty? We have a hanger, our beautiful bow, and those showstopper poinsettias. They are stunning. One more look at the swag. If I seem to be going too fast for you, feel free to find your pause button and pause, and you can also do a screenshot if you would like to do that. I'm enjoying crafting and getting to know all you guys. It has been such a pleasure, and I really hope if you have not subscribed that you subscribe to my channel because we have the most fun on this channel. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.